Okay, so let's see how GoZ is. Now this is a stock install of GoZ. I actually went back a little bit and reinstalled GoZ, uh, the 3.2, because you know I want to show you stuff that could potentially go wrong, right? So let's go Z. Let's see what happens. So it's going to launch Maya. So far, so good. Okay, so I'm using 2009. I would highly suggest 2009 with the workflow. 2008 has awful displacements. Even with the service pack, it's still bad. Okay, so let's look at our new coin medallion. I'm going to switch over to my mouse. Six on a keyboard. So far, so good. Yes. If I turn my high quality rendering on, what do I see? I see my normal map mapped on there quite well. Good. Okay, I'm going to blow this little guy up because he's just just too small. There we go. It looks a little bit better. And let's lose a grid. All right. So now, obviously, if I render, it's going to look like crap because one thing that you know that was not in the videos that really quick. Yeah, this looks amazing render thing is the fact that in here right now I have the rendering set as default. Okay. So go into your render settings and make sure that your master layer is highlighted and render with mental ray. Also let's turn a few things on and off. Okay. Quality for one. Let's turn this to production quality. And I'm choosing just to do that. So one small change. I'm going to tip this to the side so I can see the deformations on it. Render. So that rendered in nine seconds. Not bad. Okay. Very good. So it's not, you know, the harshest transformation ever. And that's the way it should be. People try to get like deformation meshes to jump three inches off a mesh, which really it's all about illusion, people. Really. Okay, so you don't have to obviously have it come off one inch off the mesh if you don't want to. If I look into here and let's go into window, rendering editors, hypershade, and kind of look at the material for a second to get an understanding of what it's going to do. Okay, here's my displacement map. Here's this. If I click this middle button, it'll show me how things are mapped out. It doesn't really do a whole lot for you know how things are mapped out until I actually look at the blend here. Oops. Yeah. So it made its own blend. And the reason you're seeing these little folded over things is because it didn't have time to import it in. So what I'm going to do is click on this and then double click these and that way you can actually see which is which map is mapped to what. See how they automatically update. If you go into your displacement setting, you can see that the alpha gain and alpha offset has been set for you. 
really nice. And how did it calculate it? Well, back on the map. So if you want to play around with this, this is the bloat and this is the sucking factor of it all. So if I choose to up this just a little bit, let's say to 0.5. and then give it a little render. You see now that it comes off the mesh a little bit more. Okay, so that's how you change that. Another thing they didn't cover, mental ray sub approximation node. Okay, so right now it's paramedic you can go spatial if you wanted to and that way you can try to choose the divisions of the actual um, dividing when it's going through the polygon structure and looking through the alpha and then basing its white anything that's a higher white value gets subdivided more so this is you know that that work that goes easy you know there's there's probably people that are just kind of going in here but they now have skipped that whole generation of how to hook up nodes within Maya so know that there's places you can tweak these maps and uh, these are some of the ones all right very good I like it I like it a lot so uh, ZBrush 3.2 a plus 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 you fixed everything that I ever despised about some of the things that were wrong with it. I love it. Z-Sphere is amazing. Uh, this, amazing. I showed this to some of my students and uh, they just got out of the texture rendering and lighting class and they felt like, you know, they learned everything for nothing because uh, now, you know, ZBrush does it for you. What's the point? And, uh, You'll see a generation of students, though, or a generation of people that are going to know how to tweak these nodes and exactly how it worked from the time before. And you're going to see a generation that is much stronger for that. So I would highly suggest, even though Gozi is an amazing plugin from ZBrush that does it all for you, as an instructor, I want to say, hey, learn the basics too because not all applications do it just quite as nice as this and you're always going to be stronger for knowing what these do okay so you might want to check out some of my older videos where I really lay into you know max subdivisions and all that good stuff but these are just the basics that you might want to try if you up these values it's all going to up render time quite a bit parametric kind of does it for you and you know it's good enough all right so that's it so welcome to the new world of gozi and uh thanks for watching this nice little workflow where i make jewelry weird medallion things all right have a good one